all of the like things that make life normal you know like seeing your friends I've lost a lot of opportunities and I've also lost my sense of independence from it from the time being as well I've missed um other people in my family like my granddad makes you realize like how impactful that is on your mental health when it's all just like suddenly taken away from you I'm in year 11 so I would have finished I would have finished my GCSEs and would have been on holiday right now. We're having to do university applications and consider what universities we want to go to without being able to go to campus. We're not going to get told my predicted grades until September. It just kind of feels like we're all left in the dark and no one has any ideas. In the early stages of lockdown, it was very hard because, as I said, my partner shields in. So literally, we were indoors for two months without even going outside onto the main road or to the shops, anything. So at that stage, she found it um, a bit difficult because she just didn't understand why am I not going to nursery. She wakes up and she speaks about going to nursery every day. So I know she definitely misses that routine of seeing her friends doing things in a certain order. Suddenly the whole scaring her into, you know, we can't touch other people, we can't go close to other people. And it's like, well, pff, why is this happening? At the beginning, we had really hard meltdowns. She was hitting, throwing toys, like breaking them and everything. And after like three or four of those big meltdowns, we actually kind of got through to her. And um, she, she was being just like, well, this whole lockdown is just too much. Like, I miss my friends, I miss my nursery, I miss my playgroups. Both my dad and mum are key workers, so nothing's changed. They still went to work, no one's working from home. So, but I'm at home, my brother and sister are at home. I have to feed them, I have to, you know, make sure that they're doing some sort of school work so they don't, you know, come into September because you know, they're all moving up but it's been difficult because I've got my own school work of course. We're not allowed to walk anywhere by ourselves anymore. Because I'm a young carer we've had no government guidance for us especially. We've been left in the dark from this whole um, COVID-19. There's a new generation of young carers that have come from it and it's like those are young people who have had no experience in the system at all and have had to learn to care and learn to do everything while no one is there. And I think it's a really important thing that the government listen. It kind of feels like the world stopped and yet we're still supposed to keep doing everything. Parents have been left behind because of they don't have the information. For example, those that don't have uh, internet or laptop or any, you know, media, social media interaction. So they're missing out, even, even the children as well. The feeling that you've just been, you know, a passenger in all of this and you haven't been able to put an input in. Throughout this whole process, young people's voices are not heard. We shouldn't just, just like that go back into kind of education, just expect children to um, be entirely comfortable with going straight back into their kind of usual school lifestyle. I think like maybe this sort of like integration back in to slowly get them readjusted and accustomed to it. Parents who are immigrants are left out of a lot of the services. For example, having your visa doesn't entitle you to certain services. For example, the NRF, which is on a lot of visas, no recourse to public funds. You have to work to sustain yourself. You're not able to get social housing and all the rest of it. I can see it blatantly. Your child will then suffer because you're going to be bringing that child to a friend, a cousin, everyone where you can not, you don't have to spend that much money. And if you do have to send them to a setting where you're going to have to pay, again, you're not going to be that active parent that you want to be. What the government was giving me for the child care, it wasn't sufficient. So I would like them to look into that to help uh, whether a uh, couple or single parents or child of child care for them to ease them so that anything they are doing or for them to get back to work or to get something into activity to earn it, and also to stay, to have something sustained in my, um, our mouth, you know, for them to, to live a normal life. There's going to be a huge divide with young people from shielded or immune compromised backgrounds compared to those not. I think 
because obviously there's no guarantee that those young people can go back into education in September for the safety of their own family. Group sessions where you can just talk about this whole traumatizing thing. And let's be honest, it is traumatizing for all of us, you know, for not just the children. An acknowledgement and appreciation of mental health kind of struggles that will come out of this. Opening the libraries again, that would be amazing. Having more services to do with befriending. I think it's one of the key things that we could utilize in the future, as in having a connection with parents who are isolated. I'd like to see the government do more for those who are unpaid carers. Better bereavement support for those of us that have lost loved ones during the pandemic. I would like the government to prove that they listen. I would like some guidance for the future, because it's kind of uncertain.